This is The Money Makers. I'm Bruce Whitfield. Shrey Virana is the head of Discovery Vitality in South Africa. Now, we've spoken about rewards programs on the show in the past, and I'm somewhat skeptical about them. But there is something changing in the attitude of South Africans who happen to be clients of Discovery and who happen to have taken on an offer of an Apple Watch, but also lots of other devices in the recent past as well. The idea is, rather than just tell the time, a device you wear on your arm can change your life. Really? Okay. Shrey, take me through it, because the Apple Watch, I think, is a fairly new addition to this idea of Fitbits and Bitfits and other devices that sure. mad exercise junkies wear on their arms to push themselves as close to a heart attack as possible without collapsing and actually dying. But it's changing the yeah. way in which people behave. It's a fundamental shift. Absolutely. And, and I think it's important, Bruce, if I can just position it, I think it's more than the obsessive engaged athletes as you describe it. I think the reality is you're seeing a lot more of people who are relatively sedentary, who aren't active at all, who are getting into the wearable tech space. So whether it's as simple a device as a step counter through to a relatively sophisticated device like an Apple Watch, there's a broad spectrum of society that are recognizing the opportunity to shift their behavior and more importantly track their behavior through so devices. What is it in our makeup, in our psychology that the moment we can measure it, we start competing with ourselves, because that's essentially what it is. Sure, I think uh, people enjoy the competition, I, absolutely. I think more importantly, I do believe society is becoming more and more aware about the need to be more active or, or healthier in general. And I think the reality is devices and technology are enabling that. Uh, and we've seen it quite dramatically in our active rewards program. We, we launched it in September last year. It's our fastest growing benefit in our history. And what we're seeing is already levels of engagement from people that are, are inactive to our elite athletes, a 25 to 30 percent shift in activity above what they were doing. In fact, we're seeing even larger increases in the people where you wouldn't have expected it, the overweight obese group. The people that are smoking are up by about 35 percent. So it's actually amazing how information and technology, with, with the right incentives, absolutely, and that's the essence of our behavioral economics model, is to recognize how to incentivize using the right metrics. Okay, and now explain to me, please, the behavioral <coughs> economics then of I am a, not the world's most active individual. Sure. But somebody like me slaps something like that onto their wrist and on day one does a thousand steps and suddenly becomes aware of the fact that actually they sit around too much. Um, they, they, they wake up in the morning, they go to the breakfast table, they get in their car, they're parked closest to the lift, take the lift, not the stairs, get to the table, sit at their desk all day and then do the reverse process home and realize during the day that they've done nothing. It sparks perhaps a change in attitude? It does. I think that the, the technology and the information to some extent does. We do believe the, the large shift and the more sustainable shift comes with the incentives that are linked to it. Most people want to be healthy. And, and I think tracking creates awareness. Absolutely it does. But the incentives that come with it, in, at least in our experience within the vitality world, is what creates the fundamental shift. And that's where the behavioral economics of the appropriate incentives and the appropriate rewards and with creating easier access through making the devices more, more affordable or giving them... Uh, there, there are a range of issues there because you make the device affordable, in other words, that device, the Apple Watch, take it off if you don't mind. Absolutely. I don't want you to, um, it, it, to think you're dead or anything. Um, but, but this is the Apple Watch. It's not nearly as ugly as actually the picture suggested it would be. It, it's quite an attractive uh, device. Um, it can have different faces on it and all of that sort of sure. thing. You can make it look like a proper watch. Um, <laughs> I'm sure Apple will be pleased to know that you've got high regard you now. know, they, they, it's, no, I've, I've actually made their day. Uh, I've made Tim Cook's day. He thinks that finally somebody worthy has acknowledged it. Now, <laughs> what is contained in here is an extraordinary amount of technology in only the way that <coughs> Apple can do. But on the back are sensors which check motion, check pulse rates. You can input data to tell it when you go to sleep and when you wake up in the morning. Just give me a sense of what this device does. So from, from a fitness and activity point of view, there's two key things in it. I think one is, as you mentioned, the pedometer, which is the counting of steps. It's able to track your distance traveled, et cetera, or the, how, how far you've walked in the day. The, the other is, as you referenced, the, the spectrometer at the back, which, which measures uh, the heart rate uh, 
on your wrist. And in doing that, it then allows the combination of those two, to, which we then get access to, to measure different levels of activity and engagement. So somebody who's starting an exercise will switch it on, start the activity, train for a period of time, we'll know how long they trained for, because it's measured once they switch it off, and at the same time, the intensity of the heart rate. And, and that combination allows us to track the shift in, the, in their health and wellness, and given our relationship with Discovery Health, we also then, in the long term, able to track how that shifts their broader health outcomes. That's all well and good if you do something like you go for a run or you go to gym. Sure. Um, I'm, I understand if you jump in the swimming pool, uh, you might need a new one. Um, it, it, it's not yet um, for, for everybody or everything. I, I, I think that's a fair statement. I don't think an Apple Watch is for everybody, but I think it's the kind of device that is incredibly aspirational as a brand. And I mean, we all know Apple globally is, in, is an unbelievably successful company, and we do rec we do recognize and we see in in the, the, our consumers that are activating it, uh, the level to which it's shifting behavior. Okay, the group that's in in the Apple mm -hmm. Watch using group within our Active Rewards is significantly higher engaged and much more active than even our broader population. Now, I have put on your Apple Watch. Does it think you're dead? Or does it think that you're having a heart attack or a health crisis? Um, how would that change, for interest sake? I mean, here you are, super fit and healthy. Um, you, you, you like to run, you like to cycle, you're, you're, a, you're a fit guy. I know people who run and I sometimes cycle. Um, how, how does this watch then cope with the change of wearer? It, today it wouldn't. They've, there's no device on the market that I can think of currently that can pick up unique identification of the individual. The technology is shifting quite r rapidly. There are device manufacturers who are looking at being able to pick up the unique vein ID pattern on your hand and use that as an identifier. And there's some technology in play, again, not out in the market yet, where they're looking at resting heart rates, etc. So assuming you and I are different fitness level, it would be able to pick up that yeah. there's somebody else who's wearing it. Because I could attach this to my dog or to one of my very energetic children. Would I then buck the system? Because I, in the same way, and I know you don't want to admit this, but people go no, to the gym, well, swipe their it. card, go and have coffee at Kauai and then leave. Um, lovely coffee, and you, you get a gym visit. Boom, job done. And they keep putting on weight and can't figure out why. They keep going to gym. These things are brilliant, but you've got to have the level of integrity Absolutely. to make it work effectively. And I think that's broader than Apple. It's important that I point that out. I think abuse or pervas perversive use of any of these devices is a concern. Within the active rewards world, we're seeing an increased uptake of that, unfortunately. We'd like to always trust on the integrity of all of our but members. that's the trouble. If you're incentivizing a certain level of behavior, and my behavior doesn't match the sort of incentive I would like to have, because what's motivating me is not better health, but actually the incentive, uh, there are some people like that, Sure. then I may try and cheat. Unfortunately, I do think a, a small proportion of our base would, would, would be doing that. In the same way as people try and overclaim our medical aid and all sorts of other sure. things, there are people who try and jump the system. And, and we're seeing it. We're seeing it in the data that we're collecting across a set of devices that we are seeing inappropriate behavior. It's something we're constantly aware of. And How do you penalize that? Do you? Well, we don't want to penalize it. I think that's, personally, I believe that's the wrong approach. I'd rather. Con and constantly look at our, our rules and our benefit rules to encourage the right behavior, get engagement for, from the vast majority of our membership base who are doing the right thing, but at the same time tighten up the rules so that we, we, uh, we're creating lower inappropriate behavior. And that's something we're looking at at the moment. How do you work out what is an appropriate level of in incentive to get a couch potato off the couch and uh, into the deep fat fryer? Well, I th the reality is I think 15 years of history in terms of the behavioral economic space and, and the broad set of, of information we have, it's a combination of the, uh, some very clever actuaries we have, uh, rich experience in terms of the clinical outcomes that we see, and, and deep understanding of the behavioral economics. And the combination of those three brings a lot of the science into the product development that we do. We, we also constantly mon monitor it, because I think the reality of gamification, as you're talking about, which is which types of incentives shift, which types of behavior in different types of people, isn't a static space. It's something that is evolving, and so we, we recognize the need to tailor 
the benefits accordingly. Now, I've spoken to lazy people who, who have worn these, previously lazy people, and they've become obsessed. Glad and to hear. Uh, what is interesting in the, the three case studies that I've done, just talking to, to friends who've, who've gone onto these devices, is they believe that it's not no longer about the device, and this is six to eight weeks in. Sure. It actually is changing their attitude to the way in which they behave. They're feeling better, they're, resp they're behaving differently, they're taking the stairs rather than the escalators or the lifts. So first, that's, that's fantastic to hear. Uh, we see that, you know, beyond the example of the three that you described, we've seen that in almost 160,000 people just in the last few months who are engaging in our active rewards program because of this. And what, to your earlier point about it becomes sustained, I think a lot of our research shows, is, as you say, that six to eight week mark is where habit forming happens. It's where activity happens for the sake of activity in the sense that the endorphin release, the level of you know, positive energy people get, the shift that they see in their own health outcomes. Because people see it, they will see the change in weight or the weight loss for those who are overweight. They'll see their activity levels improve. You'll see, see you know, secondary to the activity change, you'll see the nutrition change happen. And, and we see lots of stories of it. The exciting thing for us, given that we focus on wellness, and I know right up front you referenced the, the rewards and your skepticism about loyalty programs, but, but, this is, but, but this is not, I mean, uh, that was cynical, but this is not a loyalty program in this. Not this is all. designed, as Vitality always has been designed, and why it's been taken up by Ping An and by uh, the guys in America and the United mm. Kingdom, other parts yeah. of the world as well. It, it is about incentivizing a change in behavior. Absolutely. And, and beyond a change in behavior, it's about a change in wellness and health outcomes. And that's something we can very clearly track and demonstrate, is that we can absolutely shift the health and well-being of individuals quite materially through effective engagement in vitality. And you get a free a flight well, once every five years. Well, hopefully much more <laughs> frequent than that if you're engaged in the program. The rewards are exceptional, but we do recognize that you do need an element of incredibly compelling benefits. To, to initially shift the behavior. And as you say, it becomes sustained because people recognize the personal gains they're getting in their own health and wellness. And the screen tells me you're entitled to a free coffee at Kauai. Uh, and it, it's, it's, what's clever about that is it's not the unattainable air mile sort of model is you have to fly for 500 years sure. um, in the back of a plane before you get an upgrade. This is short-term incentive. So it reminds you every now and again, you're doing a good thing, well done, pat on the back keep going, keep going to the bigger incentives further down the line. And, and you're spot on on that. I think there's a few elements to that. I think the first is we're moving more and more into a world that's more real time. We recognize that our consumer wants a more frequent, not just a reward, but also interaction. And so the active rewards model is a weekly one. We set you a goal every Saturday morning. It's personalized to you. That's another important aspect of what's shifting behavior. There's a large proportion of people who look at these compelling rewards and go, it's not achievable. This one is tailored to your fitness level. And, and over a few weeks, we then adjust it up or down based on how you've done against your ability. I don't think that this program, I'm, I'm going to try it. I'm, 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 I'm going to commit, I'm, I'm commit to trying it. That's I want to see if I can break the system. Shrey Marina, thank you very much indeed. He's the head of Discovery Vitality in South Africa. Better give you that back before I put it in thank my you. pocket. We'll get you one get soon. Get my own. Oh my goodness me, there's a big commitment. But hey, it's done now. Thank you so much for watching The Money Makers. We'll turn the program to the Fat Burners. More next time. Bye-bye.